So with the release of Julius Alliance came a new meta with the release of Shadows, Tal Knights, Yang Zing and Burning Abyss, all of which are doing very well in the new tournaments. Now with the new meta comes a new anti meta and well my suggestion for a deck is the Ultra Athlete Monarch Artifact deck or UMAD for short. So this is it. First up we got triple UA Mighty Slugger. Uh, Mighty Slugger counts a lot of things in the current meta, so all the Shadol flip effects, all the El Shadol float effects, constructs effect to destroy all special summon monsters, Eugenji Crane, Onis, Gear Gear Armor, the Yangzings, and Hans. Many, many things. Uh, so he is really good. He's 2 300 beta, which gets boosted up by, by 500 by US Stadium if it's special summon, so 2 800 Armides can counter a lot of things. Next up we've got the UA Perfect Ace. Whatever UA Mighty Slugger can't stop, UA Perfect Ace does within reason. I mean it can't stop Torrential and Bottomless and Solemn and anything that responds to Summon, but if it activates in your opponent's turn, UA Perfect Ace and stop it. So that if you hit the right card, that can really ruin your opponent's day. So it also adds the stun aspect to the deck. So say you get rid of an Altair to special summon and your opponent doesn't have an answer, then they're stuck for the turn and you can just beat over them with Mighty Slugger next turn. Next up we got Triple Caius. Caius is really good. It's non-destruction removal and if you dis if you banish a dark monster you flick a thousand so you can get a nice thousand burn against shadows very easily or even burning abyss. And that thousand burn can make a massive difference. Plus it, you know, gets rid of it permanently but pretty much in those two decks. So next up we got the Artifact Tension, so we've got 3 Morale Attack, a Beagle Attack and 3 Artifact Sanctum. Uh, this basically gets out your Tribute Fodder very easily, because Artifacts can be summoned in your opponent's turn, they can get a plus from Morale Attack's Destruction Effect, and yeah, just be used as Tribute for the others. And it adds in itself a nice control from, you know, Field Control, you can get rid of like, say your opponent summons a BLS or some monster to deal with Perfect Ace, you can just Sanctum into Morale Attack and get rid of it. So it really does help. Uh, next up we got Triple Battle Fader. Battle Fader is another way of getting Tribute Fodder. Plus it stops OTKs. So say your opponent makes it around your defences, you can just summon Battle Fader and you won't lose instantly. Which is always good. It allows you to make, try and make a comeback play as well. Then we got Dark Hall, Book of Moon, two staples. Um, Feast of the Wild level 5. Acts as a double monster reborn or a single monster reborn for either of your UAs. It can start the engine again should one of them get destroyed. So say you get torrential on your UA mighty slugger, you can just bounce it. You can summon it with Feast of the Wild, return it with Perfect Taste and you've still got your engine going. So it really does help when your players get disrupted. Uh, triple duality for consistency, US Stadium. US Stadium is really, really good in this deck. It, it acts like a black whirlwind, which is always a good thing. Also can boost up your monsters to sometimes ridiculous proportions if you can get like multiple special summons off. So say you had like a, I've had before, I've had a Caius, and I've just been able to get the UA loop going next to it and it keeps boosting Caius every time so it can get to 3-4 after two turns, which is insane. Then we've got Monarch Stormforth. Monarch Stormforth in this deck is unbelievably good. It acts as monster removal, that's non-targeting, non-destruction, doesn't act like it's by effect, so not many things get their effects off it, so only like heretics and evil tiles like Najashio and El Gennaro will get their effects off it, so there's not that many things. Soul Exchange, uh, increased probability of being able to tribute some of your monsters, it's targeting and it removes your battle phase, but it's it can get your engine started, say if you have US Stadium, Soul Exchange, your opponent has a monster and you have one of the US in hand, you get your loop going, which is what you're trying to aim for basically all the time, because that is very controlling. Uh double lance, protection from um spells and traps. I found that uh when I was playtesting this I was using MSTs instead of lances and um I found that people tried baiting out my perfect taste with things like Dark Hole or Breakthrough Scale or Monarch Stone Forth, and that really ruined my day, so Forbidden Lance protects you, it can also help Slugger beat other things it can't get over itself, and yeah, it's just a really, really good card. Uh, Call of the Haunted works well with the artifacts, because you can summon a attack on their turn and pop a monster, and it also does the same thing as Feast of the Wild, where it 
gets your loop started again and it just provides generic tribute fodder most of the time. You can also make big pushes for damage. Uh, Solemn Warning, uh, Torrential, Bottomless and Compulsed generic staple traps. Very very good for disruption because this deck is all about stun basically and just generally trying to get advantage through you know your effects and just stopping your opponents from playing very efficiently. Uh, the extra deck is just not very important, I don't really use it that often. Normally I just get Slugger, Perfect Ace, Slugger, Perfect Ace, Slugger, Perfect Ace and beat down with that, maybe add in a Caius or a Morale Attack or two just to get some extra damage in, so I don't really use it often but it's nice to have some options, so I run double Durandal um, can fix dead hands, which I don't really use that often or you could use it to stop an, op an opponent's monster trap boss, normal spell or normal trap effect and get to pop possibly an artifact if you've got one in your back row or maybe a dead called the haunted or a dead soul exchange just you know it does disrupt your players quite, your opponents plays quite a lot uh, double Pleiades because it's very disruptive uh, double Tiras because it's indestructible by card effects and it gets rid of your opponents cards very easily because of you know its destruction effect so yeah it's also very disruptive Adrius destroys the face of cards so it's just more of a removal uh, Volcosaurus can be game ending with its destruction and burn effect. Uh, if not, it puts a lot of pressure on your opponent to get rid of it because, you know, it can get, get almost gaming the damage very easily with this, especially if it's being beaten down for a while and there's some, something big to deal with it. You some Volcosaurus and destroy it and burn them for that much damage, then they're going to be in trouble. Uh, Crimson Armor Ninja protects itself. It's basically like an engineer except it's not turned itself to defense. And yeah, it just protects itself. It's very good at protecting itself. Uh, Shark Fortress, in case I want to get extra damage in for some bizarre reason. Uh, Zen Mayo, if they have a lot of back row that I want to get rid of, I can just go into Zen Mayo. Back row is not very much, very often a problem unless it's something like Compulse or something that doesn't respond to an attack, basically. Silent on a Dark, in case I get three level five monsters out, which is, can happen, but, you know, not often, but it's got a nice removal effect. You know, it's basically arc, but it can target any special summon monster and attach it to it as exceeds material, except obviously tokens. Uh, Ptolemy, overlay with Pallades, get to Caius, whatever. You know, it can bounce your opponent's monsters, recycle your monsters, and Gaia Dragon, the Thunder Charger. Uh, just, you know, in case you want to get extra damage in, what with Volcasaurus especially. So yeah, that is the deck. Uh, it counters a lot of meta, as I said. And if you think that you might want to try it, go ahead, test it, see what you think of it. And I personally enjoy playing it. I've had a lot of victories, which I'll show you here. So I've had a few against Shadows, Burning Abyss, Battery Men. Just, you know, very good decks. And it can beat them. Sometimes I lose, obviously, because you don't win all the time. Like I lost against Monarchs the other day, but I didn't get a picture of that. But, um, yeah. Very, very good anti-meta deck in my opinion. You may disagree, but if you have any comments at all, negative or positive, please put them in the comment section below. And if you enjoy the video, please like, favorite, comment and subscribe. And I will see you later.